Hello everyone and welcome to the Life in the Universe Pandemic Series, a set of short talks about everything to do with life in the universe. And today I thought I would talk about this topic, are we or might we be alone in the universe or for all intents and purposes alone in this big dark universe. Now this is not a very popular topic to talk about and that's one of the reasons why I think it's interesting. Uh, we are imbued with a culture that's very positive about the prospects for contact with alien intelligence, close encounters of the third kind, uh, Star Wars, Star Trek, and it goes on, an endless series of films about making contact with alien intelligence that makes us very optimistic. It also uh, encourages this idea that although we haven't made contact with alien intelligence, it's just a matter of time. We just have to improve our technology. Maybe we're not trying to detect them in the right way. And eventually we will, of course, build spacecraft and be able to go and visit aliens, even if they don't come here. And we like to believe that it's a very, uh, in some sense, um, Victorian idea that everything is uh, doable with enough progress and enough technology. We will always overcome barriers and eventually achieve what we want to do. And contact with extraterrestrial intelligence is no exception. It's another idea that we are convinced uh, we will eventually happen with enough patience and enough technology. But how is it that we could be alone in the universe? Well, of course, the origin of life could be a lot rarer than we think. We might live in a universe uh, where uh, intelligent life is extremely uh, sparsely distributed throughout the universe, even if it does exist elsewhere. We don't really know enough about the origin of life uh, to be able to know how common it is throughout the universe. And even if it's common, uh, the evolution of intelligence uh, after an origin of life might also be rare. It may not be uh, very common that life evolves on a planet and then transitions to intelligence. This argument that we live in a universe with so many planets and stars, we, we, there must be intelligence out there purely from a statistical point of view, uh, does not necessarily hold. For example, if there is a chemical reaction in the origin of life that is so unusual uh, and so improbable that in fact it's extremely unusual to have an origin of life. It could be that trillions of planets in the universe make no difference. We could be the only life-bearing planet in the universe and even if we're not, even if there are lots of them out there, they could still be sufficiently rare that for all intents and purposes with respect to intelligence we are alone. Now some people say well even if intelligences are rare uh, eventually we'll be able to go faster than the speed of light and maybe visit these intelligences. Uh, we'll be able to go in through a wormhole and reappear somewhere else in the universe and speak to these other intelligences. The problem with that is that we don't have any good physics or practical understanding of wormholes even if they do exist and we still don't have any idea that if we could make a wormhole whether we could put a spacecraft into it and have it reappear in a uh, location of our choice somewhere else in the universe and to be able to visit these aliens. Other people have come up with other ideas where you could squash space time and essentially travel through the universe effectively faster than the speed of light. Again interesting ideas but no good physics to suggest we can actually make this happen, and particularly with a large macroscopic object like a spaceship. And here's another problem, that it may well be that uh, traveling faster than the speed of light is impossible. Now, scientists are always a bit cautious about making statements like that. People used to think that if you travel faster than about 30 or 40 miles an hour, that would kill you. And so making statements like we can never go faster than the speed of light is not something people like to do. But we should remember that the universe is not limitless, it's bounded by laws of physics. And so at some point, presumably our civilization must come up against the boundaries of physics. That must be a reality. And it could be that the speed of light is an ineluctable limit, which we cannot transgress no matter how good our technology. That could be an example of one boundary of physics that technology can never surpass simply because uh, the universe is bounded by the laws of physics and that happens to be one of the boundaries. In which case we are left with a conclusion that if we wanted to reach other intelligences elsewhere in the universe we're going to have to travel for tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. If we were to be lucky enough to detect a planet that we thought had an intelligent civilization 10,000 light years away even traveling of course at the tenth of the speed of light it would take us a hundred thousand years. Can we build a spaceship and put thousands of people in a spaceship and have them travel uh, for 100,000 years and come out intact 
on the other end with all those generations in that confined space. It's not clear that our physiology or our psychology could endure those journeys for that length of time. And it could well be the case that that is uh, true for other extraterrestrial intelligences. If they're out there, they look out into the vast expanse of the galaxy or the universe, and they see these great distances, and they are distances that simply cannot be crossed in any reasonable or practical length of time. Now, some people have said, well, even if that was the case, you could just go very slowly and build an enormous ship with a large number of creatures where they would feel like they were living on a planet and then their psychology would be acceptable and they could endure these great journeys over long lengths of time. But then you'd have to ask the question, what would be the motivation for doing that? If our own planet was threatened with catastrophe, there are probably better ways to try and save our civilization than getting in giant ships and heading out across the emptiness of space for hundreds of thousands of years. And perhaps the aliens would also see little merit or reason for crossing the galaxy over such vast distances just for the sake of saying hello to another intelligence. They may never develop the motivation to do such long-term trips. So we're left with the possibility of a variety of things that could explain a lack of aliens and might mean that we ourselves never visit aliens. A number of things such as the rarity of the origin of life, uh, the possibility of the rarity of intelligence, the possibility that even if intelligence is quite common across the universe, uh, the laws of physics prevent those intelligences from crossing the universe in any reasonable lengths of time. And even if they did choose to cross these vast distances in long lengths of time, they have no motivation for doing that. Any one of these might mean that for all intents and purposes, we are alone, even in a universe of other intelligences. Another problem could be that very few intelligences, when they do appear, are at the same technological level. We could imagine intelligences appearing and disappearing, flickering in and out across the galaxy, but never really at the same time. And where they are at the same time, they're very far apart. Now, that's not to say that first contact has never occurred. Maybe out there in some dense star cluster, uh, some alien intelligence has been extremely lucky to be right next to a star a couple of light years away where there's another intelligence. And sometime in their history, the, the, the fantastical uh, spectacle of two minds coming together in the universe has occurred. So that's not to say that first contact has not occurred or will not occur in the known universe, but we are not in a dense star cluster. Uh, we don't know of any stars nearby that look like they might harbor intelligences. So there's a real possibility that for us at least, uh, we may be uh, practically alone in the universe. Now, would that be a bad thing? Would that be a terrible thing? It would be disappointing. Uh, we have put a lot of store in the idea of uh, contacting alien intelligence. But I often like to use an analogy, which is basically this analogy. If I was to say to you, I would like to see how civilization is in 500 years from now, but unfortunately I'm going to be dead, so that's not going to be happening. Uh, you're not going to come up to me and say, well, stop being so negative about your future. You should be a little bit more positive about the rest of your life. Of course, that would be a silly comment because it's not about being negative. It's just a reality that I'm not going to be around in 500 years from now. So saying that we are alone in the universe, or practically alone, and we will never make contact with extraterrestrial intelligences. Some people might say that's very negative. We should have a more positive view of our future. But perhaps it is in fact just a reality that our civilization will come and go without ever contacting an extraterrestrial intelligence. There are a lot of people who push against that idea. They really don't like it. It's not popular. It doesn't mesh with this positive view of our future. And for many space explorers, it doesn't mesh with this notion of a limitless future, which includes contact with extraterrestrial intelligence. But I think we should think about it more. And the reason why I think we should uh, consider it more is just because it's interesting. Uh, we spend a lot of time thinking about the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, coming up with protocols for how we're going to make contact with aliens, the sorts of languages and ways in which we should communicate with aliens. We come up with protocols for what would happen on the international level if we found a signal from an extraterrestrial intelligence. And all this is good. It's all very exciting. I think we should think about it. But I also think that we should address the consequences of uh, coming to a conclusion that we are completely alone in the universe. Now, of course, 
it may be difficult to come to that conclusion um, decisively because, of course, we can never prove that there's not intelligence out there. Uh, we can only look in our near galactic neighbourhood and show that there are probably no intelligences nearby. But it's very difficult to prove a total lack of life. But if we were to come to some conclusion that there is no star anywhere nearby us in this galaxy that harbours intelligence and that it is in all probability uh, the case that we are basically alone in the universe, we should think about that. Maybe it has no consequences for our civilization at all. Maybe we just wouldn't care about it, carry on living our fulfilled lives on planet Earth, exploring our solar system uh, without a concern about lack of extraterrestrial intelligence. But it is something we don't think much about. And perhaps uh, in the whole context of the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and life in the universe, we should confront more forcefully and think about the consequences of uh, coming to a conclusion that we are in fact alone in the universe, or as I said earlier, practically for all intents and purposes, completely alone in the universe. Uh, on that slightly negative but interesting thought, uh, look after yourselves in this pandemic, and uh, thank you for joining me in the Life in the Universe pandemic series.